Hi, my dear friends and my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome back. Hope you all are fine by the grace of God. Let's continue our meditation with the help of the Holy Spirit. Now the Holy Spirit has graciously given us the topic, crowd, cross and the crown. And in that he has given us the subtopic, church without Christ. Church without Christ. Please turn your Bible to Revelation chapter 22. We will do from verse 14 onwards. Revelation chapter 22 verse 14. It says, Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. Here it simply says that, Blessed are they, they do, you know, do his commandments, meaning they, we follow the words of God, which is the truth. And then the words of God become our life. Then by God's grace and mercy, we will be able to enter into the kingdom of God and be saved and all that. Then it continues. For without are dogs and sorcerers and warmongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loves and makes a lie. So, unfortunately, the next verse is talking about those who will not be allowed into the kingdom of God by God and then will end up in eternal fire. It is because one thing is they love, they love a lie because the word of God is the truth. So, the lie is nothing but the word of the devil. And they love the lie and then... The other category is those who make the lie. Those who love the lie are the goats in sheep's clothing. They are the lukewarm Christians. Unfortunately, the Holy Spirit is saying that. And then those who make a lie are the masquerading ministers of the devil. So, in these two verses, Jesus is comparing these two categories of people who will enter into eternal life and who will end up in eternal fire. And then because of that, because God is love, my dear brothers and sisters, he doesn't want anybody to perish. That's what the word says. That's why in the next verse, it says, I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. So because he doesn't want anybody to perish, that's why he has sent his angel to testify unto, uh, unto us these things in the churches. So whatever is from uh, Revelation chapter 1 to 3, mainly it is about uh, last warnings to the churches. Please let pray for the Holy Spirit and with his guidance, let us go through and grab these warnings and let us allow ourselves to be convicted by the Holy Spirit and let's repent and all of us, let us end up, enter the kingdom of God with thanksgiving and joy and rejoicing and worship and praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Let me have some water. So I, Jesus, have sent my angels to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. Now, let's go to Revelation chapter 1. And we have already finished in the previous message uh, from uh, till verse 6. And let's start from verse 7 now. Revelation chapter 1 verse 7. Behold, he comes with clouds and every eye shall see him and they also which pierced him and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, Amen. So here it says, Behold, he comes with clouds. This is talking about the second coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Behold, he comes with clouds. Now when the word clouds is there, the Holy Spirit referring us to another scripture that is in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 and 17. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16 and 17. It reads like this. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds, 
See the word clouds. To meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Remember in Revelation chapter 22, there are two categories of people. One category is those who love the truth and they will end up in eternal life. And other category is those who love the lie or those who make lies. Unfortunately, they will end up in eternal fire. That's serious this is. Where we are going to spend our eternity and going to live forever and ever. In pain or in joy. That's serious this is. My dear brothers and sisters, please, I'm pleading with you all like a fellow brother. Please pray for the Holy Spirit and ask Him to reveal these things to you. Let's continue with the help of the Holy Spirit. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. That's what it says here in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16 and 17. As we read these two verses, it's clearly it is talking about the second coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But unfortunately, there are these teachings that says that you know the church will be taken before the tribulation. And this is one of the verses they, uh, you know, refer to. And God willing in the uh, previous, sorry, in the future messages, we will go and the uh, Holy Spirit will take us uh, through these verses and we will see chapter by chapter about what actually these uh, verses which they quote are telling. What is the truth? The word is uh, telling, the verses are telling and how it is misunderstood or misinterpreted and then what is the danger of not being uh, prepared for the tribulation. Those who are not prepared for the tribulation only will end up leaving the faith and those great apostasy and all that when tribulation arises. That's what in Matthew chapter 24 uh, verses 9 and 10, Jesus is warning. Verse 9 is talking about persecution. Verse 10 is talking about the great falling away from the faith. And the modern word they have given is apostasy. But apostasy word is not in the uh, Bible. Of course, the word rapture also is not there. Only the word caught up is there. From uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 and 17. In 17, it says the caught up. From there, they took the word rapture and all that. Even the word rapture is not here. Nevertheless, for our understanding, it's all right. But we have to be careful when we are using words which are not in the scripture. We shouldn't lose, uh, you know, the connection. What's the truth the uh, Holy Spirit is re revealing to us through these words? Let me have some water, please. So, God willing, we will see that in the future messages in detail. But now, because the word is mentioned here, that's why the Holy Spirit just referred to us uh, to First Thessalonians chapter 4 verses 16 and 17. Please keep that in mind when we uh, have those messages by uh, the will of God with the help of the Holy Spirit in the future. Now, coming back to Revelation chapter 1 verse 7. Behold, he comes with clouds. This is the second coming. And every eye shall see him. And the pre-tribulation rupture and all that, they say it's going to be a secret coming. But here it says every eye shall see him even in first Thessalonians also the same thing every eye will see him because it's the you know second coming right there is nothing called secret coming nevertheless we will uh, leave that for the future messages now behold he comes with clouds and every eye shall see him and uh, excuse me and they also which pierced him and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him See, why are they wailing? This is the warning the Holy Spirit wants to emphasize to us. We should not be, oh God forbid, we should not be in that category of people when Jesus comes for the second time looking at him and wailing, God forbid. We shouldn't be. Why? Because they are not ready. They are not ready for his coming. There are two unfortunate categories of people. One is, of course, but, you know, we are not pinpointing at anybody. We should not. First of all, we should examine ourselves before we pinpoint at the world. It's not pinpointing actually with love. If the Holy Spirit is in us, the Spirit of God is a Spirit of love. He is not here to condemn anybody. Guilt and condemnation comes from the devil. But through the Holy Spirit, conviction comes. He will convict us of sin, righteousness and judgment. Those are loving warning because he loves only he convicts. Revelation chapter 3 verse 19 it says, 
as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. and therefore be zealous and repent. Because he loves only he convicts. He, that the purpose of conviction is to lead us, you know, help us into repentance so that we will not perish in the eternal fire. That's the only purpose of conviction. So, there are, you know, generally two categories, categories of people, the worldly people, when we continue in the lust, when they love the evil deceptive pleasures of sin more than the, uh, you know, unconditional and therefore unlimited love of God. Unfortunately, if they, you know, harden their hearts and then with eye and pride, uh, they uh, do not want to repent and all that, they will end up in eternal fire. That is one category. Another category the Holy Spirit wants to emphasize is those lukewarm Christians. Lukewarm Christians and they are the namesake Christians. They think they are saved when they are not saved. They think they are born again in the spirit when they are not born again in the spirit. That is the second, that category the Holy Spirit wants to emphasize. You know, those are those uh, that, uh, sorry to say that, uh, the category of people, that is the lukewarm Christians who they want to gain without pain. In Acts chapter 14 verse 22, clearly through the through Paul, the Holy Spirit has told us that we have to enter the kingdom, kingdom of God through many tribulations. Acts chapter 14 verse 22. But here this teaching is coming out. Oh, tribulation is not for us. God loves us so much. He will take us before the tribulation and all that. It is not in the word. So in the future messages we will, but with the help of the Holy Spirit, we will, uh, you know, uh, we will meditate the truth. So this wailing is because one thing they, that is talking about the worldly people. And unfortunately, this is a warning that we should not get into that category. We should be welcoming when Jesus comes, when the bridegroom comes, the bride should say, come and welcome him. Because we are waiting for that. By God's grace, we should make sure we are the bride. Otherwise, the spiritual adultery, God will call you adulterers and adulteresses. God forbid. That's a spiritual adultery. In the previous message, as God, you know, the Holy Spirit has revealed to us. Please go to the channel Grace Fresh Foods Ministries and watch those videos. Watch those messages with the help of the Holy Spirit and be blessed. Behold, he comes with clouds and every eye shall see him and they also which pierce him and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, Amen. Even if they wail, let it happen because in spite of all the loving warning, they still do not want to repent. That's why the word continues and says, even so, Amen. Let me have some water, please. So please ask for the help of the Holy Spirit and make sure we are not deceived, we are not bewitched. We make sure you don't, we don't love, we should make sure that we don't love the lie. We should love the truth and whatever the word says we should accept. There is no special privileges for anybody. The word clearly says, the many verses are there regarding tribulation and all, all that. We'll see in the future. Let's move on to the next verse. Revelation chapter 1. We just finished verse 7. Now verse 8. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, said the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. Another reason why they wail is because they accepted the devil as their God. Small g, God. Right through the Antichrist and all that. These are all in the Revelation chapter 13 and all that. God willing, we'll see in the future. So, that's why in the next verse itself, Jesus is telling, I am the Alpha and Omega, not the devil or the Satan. The beginning and the end, said the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. Remember in Isaiah chapter 14, verse uh, 14, Isaiah chapter 14, verse 14, the God forbid, the devil said, Lucifer said, I will be like the Most High. He is trying to be like God. He is not God. Amen. Hallelujah. Our one and only God is Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior of this world. Amen. Hallelujah. So, that should be our testimony till the end. 
till the end. We should endure till the end, no matter what the persecution or tribulation. God's grace is sufficient for us. He will never allow us to be tempted beyond what we can bear. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. Thank you, Lord. Right. So, let's continue. Verse 9. Here, John is telling, I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. Now here from this verse, again, the Holy Spirit is stressing, right? John is telling, through John, of course, the Holy Spirit is inspiring John to write this thing. I, John, who also am your brother. First thing John is telling, I am your brother. You know, the fellow believer, that's why he's telling, I am your brother. And companion in tribulation. You see, in the Old Testament, prophets were persecuted. In the early churches, they were persecuted. Almost all the apostles, they were persecuted. John, they tried to persecute him, but God did not allow. Because unless God allows, they cannot do anything to us, my dear brothers and sisters. We are given the spirit of power, not the spirit of fear, to fear. We are not given the spirit of fear to fear, but we are given the spirit of power. Amen. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of power. So, here they tried to, you know, persecute John, Apostle John, but they couldn't because God did not allow that. God has a different plan. Through Apostle John, he wanted to give us this revelation and all that. That's why. So, but then God allowed, but nevertheless, God allowed John to undergo those tribulation and all that, but did not allow him to die. You see, that's why John is telling companion in tribulation. Companion means, you know, we share the same thing. That's the meaning of that. So, through John, the Holy Spirit is telling us we have to undergo tribulation. So companion in tribulation and in the kingdom, of course, when we, no matter what the persecution or tribulation, we endure till the end and we stick to the truth that we love God because of that, we, uh, you know, we, we endure everything, right? Then, of course, by God's grace, we are also a companion with John in the kingdom, right? Companion with Apostle John in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ. Regarding this word, patience of Jesus Christ, patience refers to endurance, long-suffering, tolerance, patience, you know, perseverance and all that. So patience of Jesus Christ. How Jesus Christ endured the, this gruesome and painful death on the cross for you and me, for our sins? Because of his faith on Father God, right? It is Father God's... Um, what will that he should go through. That's why Jesus Christ knows that. That's why he endured all that. Right? So that is about the patience of Jesus Christ. And here John is telling we are companion with the patience of Jesus Christ also. That's why the faith of Jesus Christ and all that. We'll see in the future videos in detail. Now, just because the verse is there, the Holy Spirit wants to, you know, uh, emphasize on that verse. So I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the island, is, uh, that is, you know, island, that is called Patmos, for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. You see, whatever is given in the revelation in chapter 2 and 3 to the churches, whatever is being told, it is the testimony directly from Jesus Christ. So as we go, please listen to the loving warnings of coming from Jesus Christ and allow the Holy Spirit to convict you. I also convict. Let us allow the Holy Spirit to convict us so that we will come to the truth and we will not be deceived or bewitched and we will not be wailing when Jesus comes for the second time. Amen. You see the wailing starts from here and the word says when they end up in eternal fire there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth and wailing because of extreme pain. Let me have some water please. This is not to scare anybody. The Holy Spirit is revealing that because He loves us and He is warning us. Because whether we believe it or not, what has to happen will happen when God's time comes. Nobody can stop God from doing what He has planned to do. But before that, He is giving us this loving warning. 
He doesn't want anybody to perish, my dear brothers and sisters. But we have to love the truth and stick to the truth and we have to obey the truth and live our lives according to the truth, the word of God. So, verse 9 is telling, I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ. So, from that, the Holy Spirit has revealed to us how important tribulation that is the narrow way which leads to life. Right. Let's continue. Verse 10 now. I was in the Spirit, capital S, Holy Spirit, right? So I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. Now, John is taken in the Spirit uh, to for God to reveal to us what are the things which are going to come and all those revelations. That start from here, right? Verse 11. Saying, I am Alpha and Omega. Now Jesus Christ is talking. Uh, the first and the last. And what you see, write in a book and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia. Unto Ephesus, unto Smyrna, unto Pergamos, and unto Thyatira, and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. So God is, uh, Jesus is telling to write and send it to all the churches. Right? It includes us also. This is just for seven is a number for perfection. So actually, Jesus is giving to all the churches. He loves all of us. Amen. Hallelujah. Verse 12 now. And I turned to see the voice that spoke with me. And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. Seven golden candlesticks, it, uh, you know, refers to the uh, churches, seven churches. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like the... Uh, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot and girded about the paps with a golden girdle. This is describing Jesus Christ, how he looked and how he appeared to Apostle John. So you see here in this verse, Christ he is, you know, moving in the churches. He loves to be with his children, you see. How loving our God is, my dear brothers and sisters. Let's not listen to the lies of the devil and be deceived. Please, let's continue. His head and his hair were white like wool and as white as snow. And his eyes were as flame of fire. There you see, God is not only love, God is just. Right? His eyes were as a flame of fire. And his feet like unto fine brass and if they uh, sorry, as if they burned in a furnace and his voice as the sound of many waters. And verse 16. And he had in his right hand seven stars. That seven stars refer to the seven angels. You know, God has kept angels to protect the church and he has given the uh, his spirit, that is the Holy Spirit to be present in the church. He is the spirit of truth to teach the uh, truth and all that. You know, only truth can set us free. And uh, we can only be saved through the truth. Not the misinterpretation, but the truth. How the Holy Spirit interprets. Because he is the one who inspired different characters to write the Bible. So we cannot simply take into any meaning, God forbid. And then, you know, like blind leading the blind. We are deceived. Oh, God forbid. And then being deceived and deceived. That we saw in uh, Second Timothy and all that. All right. And he had in his right hand seven stars, the angels. And out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword. That's what the Holy Spirit in the previous message, he gave us the warning that they are trying to blunt the sword. They have a blunt sword. But the from Ephesians chapter 6, uh, verse 17. Thank you, Lord. Right. And uh, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. It, the Holy Spirit has revealed to us through these two verses, Ephesians chapter 6 verse 17 and Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12. He said, the word of God is the, the, the sword of the spirit. And that sword is two-edged sword. You know, it's sharper than any two-edged sword. Right? Here also. That's right. Here it says, and he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. Out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword. So, when they misinterpret, that means it will not convict us. Because two-edged sword, that is the word of God, the truth will convict us. 
But when they misinterpret, it is a blunt sword. That is not the sword of the Spirit, meaning that is not the word of God. But they try to present it as if it is the word of God. That's why in the previous subtopic, the Holy Spirit gave us his word without the sword. Please go to the channel Grace Fresh Foods, Ministries and watch those messages with the help of the Holy Spirit and be blessed. Let's continue. Let me ask a water please. And that's very dangerous because you know when you believe a lie you think you are saved when you are not saved and you think you are born again in the spirit when you are not born again in the spirit and being ignorant it cannot be an excuse on that day that's why repeatedly the holy spirit is graciously giving us this loving warning so that we will not be deceived or bewitched let's continue and when i saw him i fell at his feet as dead and he laid his right hand upon me saying unto me fear not i am the first and the last you see when we you know in this john is looking at God in his godliness, you know. And how much godliness God, uh, I mean, Jesus reduced so that John will not be hurt, I do not know. Because the, our God is the holies of the holies. Right? So, there is so much of power coming because of his holiness and his nature and character and all that. So, if we were to stand in front of that, we have, we, uh, you know, we only can do that with his grace and of course he will after he transform us into the spiritual body when we are taken up and all that so here it says when i saw him i fell at his feet as dead you see this same apostle john was leaning on the chest of jesus when jesus was here on this earth god manifested in flesh but now when he sees he he says he fell down as dead that's you know that's the holiness of our god we also have to be holy just as our Father in heaven is holy. Amen. So, when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not. In many places, even to Paul and different characters, always God tells, Fear not, fear not, fear not. Do not fear those who can kill your body, but rather fear him who can kill both the body and the soul in hell. So fear not, I am the first and the last, meaning I am the almighty sovereign God who is forever. I am with you. Do not fear, my dear child. That's the meaning. Let's continue. I am he that lives and was dead and behold, I am alive forever. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. So I am he that lives. And was dead. That is, he's referring to uh, his death on the cross for my sin and your sin. And was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Of course, he was resurrected by the power of God on the third day. Resurrection means he doesn't die anymore. That's the meaning. Not the being raised from the dead. And I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. You see, Jesus overcame death on the cross. That's why the wages of sin is death. Jesus overcame death. That means he overcame the sin for us also. So when we believe, Believe in him, we will be able to overcome the sin, just so he was. He was tempted in all ways, but all the ways by the devil, but then he did not sin. He who never knew sin became a sin for us. He became a sin, no, he is not a sinner. There is another misinterpretation. God forbid. He is, he became a sin for us, not a sinner. Amen. Hallelujah. And he has the keys of hell and death. Next. Verse 19, write the things which you have seen and the things which are and the things which shall be hereafter. The mystery of seven stars which you saw in my right hand and the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches and the seven candlesticks which you saw are the seven churches. That's the end of chapter 1. And in uh, uh, that verse 16, the Holy Spirit is urging to go back to verse 16. And he says, and he had in his right hand seven stars. Now we, in last verse, we saw that it is, the, it is referring to the angels, the seven angels. And then out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword. My dear brothers and sisters, 
from Ephesians chapter 6 that is about the whole armor of God it uh, in verse 17 it says the word of God is the sword of the uh, spirit the Holy Spirit and in Hebrews verse 4 um, sorry chapter 4 verse 12 it says it is sharper than any two-edged sword right so with these two verses in the previous message the Holy Spirit has told if it is my word the word of God it has to be that it is the only truth and it will be sharper than two edge any two edge sword and when somebody speaks that word if there is any evil seeds in us God forbid if there is anything the word of God that sharper than two edge sword will come in and it will convict us we can feel the conviction it should pain a little you know that any secret sins are there and all that the word will convict us because it's sharper than any two-edged sword and then why the conviction so for us to help us to repent you know so that we will be saved and we will not perish but the words of the devil are the lie and unfortunately when people have uh, you know different desires and lust which is not uh, uh, you know God which is against God and then when because they have lust then the seducing spirits will be there they will come and seduce with the lies and make them believe the lie as the truth that's very dangerous that's the deception and bewitchment bewitchment means casting spells excuse me only when we allow God forbid only when we allow ourselves to be uh, deceived we will be deceived that's what the Holy Spirit said unless you allow uh, yourself to be deceived I will not allow yourself to be deceived that's why we have to exercise the free will correctly my dear brothers and sisters wisely so they what they bring is the lie but it will look like uh, you know the truth so that sword is a blunt sword it is not the sword at all it is not the sword of the spirit at all so that sword because it is blunt when they speak it will not convict us even if anything, any evil seeds in us, it will not convict us. The word says when the Holy Spirit comes, he will convict the world of sin, righteousness and judgment. So we cannot be deceived to say, oh, there is nothing to be convicted. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. So, that will not, the blunt sword will not be able to convict us of anything. And then, uh, you know, it is just, the messages will be just for entertainment and whatever we like to hear and all those things will be there. But it will not, uh, you know, grow us in the spirit and all that. So that is the danger of that blunt, uh, you know, sword. And it is a lie. That's why in Revelation chapter 22, uh, the Holy Spirit is telling those who love the lie and those who make the lie will not end up in the kingdom of God. So, hope you all you know, you all were convicted, if at all the Holy Spirit wants to do things, you know, we should allow him to do whatever uh, according to his will. It is always good for us. God bless you all. We will continue in the next messages. God bless you all. Thank you all very much.